My name's Bagsy. I'm a pro drifter and the guy behind SB Motorsport. Over the years, we've built some amazing creations like the V8 GTR and our PS13 comp car. We bring the smoke and smiles to events all around the world with a few viral sensations along the way. But now it's time for a world's first. We're putting GTR life and soul into a Navara truck. But I'm not doing this alone. I've got a great team to help me. And some of the best partners in the industry. So buckle up, it's gonna be a hell of a ride. And even I don't know how it's gonna turn out. I just drive the car. Welcome to Project Navara R. This is Mission Control, <laughs> Project Navara R Live. Now please give it up for your host, Matt McCallum. <laughs> we are live from SB Motorsport. This is Bagsy's kitchen. And in a way, he's cooking up a blend of something suave and fast, like sushi, with something strong and reliable, like sausage roll, culminating in a blend akin to a fishy sausage surprise cocktail in the form of the world's first GTR-powered Nissan Navara. <laughs> but Bugsy, are there too many cocks in the kitchen? That's a massive intro, and I'm not even sure where to start with that, but thanks very much. It sounded great. Uh, a lot's happened in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we're really excited to be showing everybody at home tonight how far we've actually come in the last couple of weeks with the Nissan Navara project. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. The wand wizard has done a disappearing act. He's not with us tonight, and we'll get into that later. It is, Ooh. frankly, quite distressing, but we'll get into that in a bit. But the good news is we've got a green room. Whee! Green room. Yay! And we're going to be going to the green room on regular occasions to hear from you because we've got you. Yay! Everybody at home. Can you hear them? I can hear them. Go yay and touch the screen with the palm of your hand. It's probably paused the video. All the comments. All comments, the get your comments in. All the shares. Get your shares and your share, likes in. Share it with your friends. Literally, there is going to be one prize which I'm going to come up with on the spot tonight. And that will be for the best comment we get tonight, which might be the funniest. It might be the most constructive. It might be the most devastating. But we'll be impartial and we'll award a prize to the best comment we get tonight. So we're encouraging lots of comments from everybody at home. Get commenting. We've also got the manliest man in manifold manufacturing. He's over in the green room. He's from Walton Motorsports. Say Hello, Mike. Mike. Hi. Hi. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. Hello. Long drive to see us tonight. Hello. So get your questions in now. If they're for Mike, if they're for Bagsy, if they're for me, just interact with us. We need friends. Okay, now if you're like me, wondering what the hell's going on, let's get you caught up. Previously on Mission Control Navara R. I've been sent a video, I don't know if it's going to be any good. To witness the first Nissan GTR slash Navara test tube, baby. You know, we want something that can still go to the shops, go to B&Q, pick up some men. What's the expected finish date? The heads up. We're just waiting for the rest of it to pop up. <laughs> Bagsy, bath bomb. I feel like um, you're taking me to nursery. Yeah, tell me so I'm the best. Fit, I'd be pretty good. Tell me I'm the best. No, forget it. Next. <laughs> Why are we stood here? I don't know. No, there's a point to it. You know, we're going backwards here. I'm quite into that. You already know, don't you, that it's innovative. It's kind of weird, right? <laughs> Reasons to keep watching. Well, what's coming up is we will be exclusively tonight revealing the first stage render of what this Navara R is going to look like with Sterling Automotive. Yeah, we're extremely excited. We partnered with a true British brand, Sterling Automotive in Blackburn, have come up with something I think looks absolutely amazing. The Navara R project styling is going to be awesome. That's it's key, key, isn't it? Styling. That is exactly it. It is. The styling. Style. Styling at Sterling. We'll also be talking turbos. Uh, what else have we got coming up? We have a live electro funk infusion performance by me. 
Thanks, he's particularly looking forward to that. Uh, we'll be talking swallows, and we'll be generally catching up and following the progress, the day-to-day -day progress of the Navara R build, each day becoming more confusing and stressful. But July's been insanely busy. Weird, but it has, hasn't it? You Weirdly, find, you yeah. Kind of got the we, year found, started. we found quite a lot to do in July. We were lucky in the fact that we got some really cool opportunities. We got to go testing and we got to do a little bit of driving, which essentially is what excites me about everything we do. Well, we've got a lot to get through, but let's take a whistle-stop tour through July. First, we went to Storff. Let's have a look at that. Yourself and a very brave motorcyclist there. The staff. He goes by the name of Storm Stacy. He's competing in the British Superbike Series this year. His first outing, I believe, was only two weeks ago, and he did very well for his first ever event in British Superbikes. Youngest rider, I think, in Superbikes at the moment, and uh, yeah, did a fantastic job. We were very lucky to go and see the guys at, uh, at Stauff and uh, visit one of their, uh, you know, HQs in the United Kingdom, which was in Sheffield, and we got to film that awesome little video. Uh, we, uh, he also survived the infamous Banksy double donut going around on the inside. Um, <laughs> you next you went to Stapon. Uh, can we see that? Um, what happened here? So Snap-on reached out to us uh, in, an, in July and told us about a young, a young guy called Josh, who you can see here in the video, um, who's had a bit of a hard time recently. He was actually one of the first people in the, uh, in the UK to order, if not the first person actually in the UK, to order one of our signature toolboxes with Snap-on tools. And uh, unfortunately, due to the circumstances uh, and a terrible accident that he experienced at work, he was the last person to get that toolbox. So uh, Snap-on reached out. They asked us if we'd, you know, send some merchandise up uh, so that he could have some, you know, uh, you know, tops or t-shirts, jumpers, whatever, when he got the toolbox. But we decided we'd go one step further. So we travelled up to Birmingham with the Nissan GTR, parked it in a unit next to the toolbox. And when he arrived, we surprised him that we were there with the car and his toolbox. Snap-on uh, head office came down and they also gave some uh, tools to him as well as a little bit of a present. A little bit of a pick-me-up, a little bit of a trying to make him feel a little bit better yeah. and something really nice to do. And it was awesome to meet him and his little dog that he brought along with him on the day. Genuinely the feels. And these are just snippets, by the way. This is a very quick tour. The Stout video you can watch on Bags's YouTube channel. The, uh, the Snap-on video, you can get the whole story behind that. But as we've teased already, you went to Sterling Automotive. Now that's coming up at the end of the show, but let's have a look at the visit that you did over with the, the Sterling guys. Yeah, so this is us getting a little bit of a tour. We went down to uh, Sterling, uh, who are they're based in Blackburn. They are a true British brand. They completely understood from the beginning what we wanted to do. Uh, they work on Defenders, new and old. They do fantastic things with vans. They do fantastic things with trucks. There's a reason and that's blurred out. There is, there is a reason that's blurred out because that is actually what the truck's going to look like. Yeah, the artwork looks better than that. The artwork hopefully does look better than that and I guess people are going to have to wait until the end of the show unless they kind of just saw a little bit there on the screen that almost let them see what we're working with. But they're an amazing brand. Uh, we're very, very lucky to have them on board and we're really looking forward to showing everybody what the truck's going to look like, potentially what it's going to look like. We're about 80%, I'd say, or 85% done um, with the truck at this point. But uh, it's certainly a very exciting work in progress. In about an hour's time, there thereabouts, you're going to see exactly what that looks like. But next, you got to do some driving, some drifting. Yeah, we did. Yeah, see, let's see it. It happened. Yeah, so this is a few weeks ago testing at Teesside Autodrome uh, in Middlesbrough. We got to run the car, which was, you know, really cool. We got to drive the car for the first time this year. Uh, well, the, certainly the PS13 was the first time we got to drive it this year. We also tested some new tyres from Accelera, some new development tyres, which we're very excited about. They were a massive step uh, yeah. in the right direction from what we were using last year to this year. And uh, yeah, very pleased that how the car reacted and even the changes we'd made in the off season uh, or extended off season, uh, we were, yeah, was really good. Yes, yes, a very, very close friend to the live stream, to the Navarra project, to SB Motorsport. Uh, our good friend, George, he was there too. We can just have a look at 
It's a pretty good run, pretty good run. Let's take a look. <laughs> oh, George. <laughs> let's, 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 let's check in with George. Are you, first of all, are you all right? Bad times. Yeah, I'm fine. Good. I'm fine. Car's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, one of those things, isn't it? It is, yeah. So well, that's, we do. What, that's what testing's all about, oh, isn't it, mate? Pushing well, to the limit. That's it. We've got to push it to the limit and then wind it back. Maybe that time about 50%. I mean, it didn't. But it... I will say that I am always striving to become a better driver. So, being mates with Steve, I'm always trying to better myself and be like Steve. Yeah. Earlier in the day, Steve done quite a similar run, I'd say. Did he? Did yeah. he now? Have you got um, any footage? As you, funny you should mention yeah? that, we've oh, got right. some pictures. Oh, that's cool. Um, what have we got? What have we got? I think it's another one of you, though, George, actually. Um, picture coming oh, out. Yeah, that's, oh, that's George. Me. Yeah, right there. Pigeon. Yeah, that was just, yeah that was a bit of seagulling going pigeon, on there. Yeah. Um, the next picture we have, I think. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Not everyone's so, perfect. Yeah, that was earlier on in the day. Yeah. And um, I, Again, saw that. We I, saw, were... I saw Steve do it, and I thought, I want to be like Steve. I want to be the big boy. I'm going to do the same thing. So, yeah, you there's know, only, went. there's only one big boy around here, mate. There is, and uh, yeah, I'm uh, trying. There's the damage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Well, you got, you know, that's part of testing, pushing the limit, uh, finding the limit, going past it, and then raining, the it, back, raining, it, back. raining it back. We learned slightly. a good, we, we, we learned a good lesson. Well, you taught me a good lesson that day. I think it was all an educational experience that, that you know, bettered us both off there, didn't it? Really. It's good. It's good yeah. fun. It's good times. What a great start to the drifting year. Cheers, man. Huh? Hey, it can, it, only going to get better than that. It can only hey, get, well, only it, gonna get better hopefully than that. Hopefully it doesn't get any worse, that's mm, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, just take us to the British Drift Championship. And uh, it's interesting, we talked about Ian. Uh, you said about him because he's obviously working on the car, then commentating impartially about the car, and then uh, denying all knowledge of any problems. I think that's what you said. Let's see what you said last, last month. Basically how it works is Ian is friends with us Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but then on Thursdays when he flies out to Driftmasters, he hangs out with his Driftmaster sort of, you know, crew. production company yeah. crew. Yeah, he gets And then, head on. so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, he doesn't really want to know us. He walks past the paddock like he doesn't really know us, kind of just waves. Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Car okay? No, yes. You know, and then, you know, when he's, when he's, you know, when he's announcing, yeah. If there's a problem with the car, he denies all knowledge of anything to do with it. However, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it may have played a massive part in that role. Yeah. But then when it comes to Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, he just doesn't really want to know about it. So you were there with some problems. Before we talk about the problems, it started off all right in Scotland on the practice, didn't it? Yeah, so Friday was a practice day at the British Championship uh, at an opportunity to shake the car down and get you know, familiar with the track. Which, we went, see? which all went fairly well. Yeah, this went well. I mean, that looks awesome. That looks awesome. But then things took a turn for the worst. It was all looking so promising. It uh, was. Yeah, the car was feeling just, great. Just, just sorry, sorry. Because, um, you know, sometimes in here, it sounds a little bit dead, like there's a little bit of an echo. And I, I, what I wanted to try, can we try with a music bed? Tell us the story, but to a music bed, just to kind of build that <laughs> vibe. You ready? I can try. OK, so just tell us what went wrong. So the last round of the, <laughs> so the last lap of the track at Scotland, uh, unfortunately we broke the clip that holds the rocker on uh, in the cylinder heads. And uh, yeah, the rocker failed, which meant we were uh, having major issues and the car just didn't want to run very right. So <laughs> I, have no, I have no more words, in all honesty. <laughs> Mark, you were there, weren't you? I need this now. Yes, I was there as well, yeah. I was also commentating with uh, Ian, 
And uh, yeah, Steve, you didn't really give us uh, very much to commentate on, did you, mate? No, unfortunately, I only managed, uh, only managed about 10 laps in practice on the Friday, and then Saturday I missed practice because we were fixing the engine. Sunday I went back out, did two warm-up laps, uh, uh, two warm-up donuts, in fact, just warming the tyres up, and that was all she wrote. That was when the things got well, even worse again, so. Yeah, Corbin's not with us tonight. I did ask him last month how he feels at these events when things go wrong after all the blood, sweat, and tears he's put in, and we can witness that right now in the field. Ah, uh, fucking hey. This piece of shit. What a fucking nail. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, that's he, that's you're catching Corbin there at his uh, at his uh, at his worst. You know, he's put a yeah. lot of time and effort into that car, and uh, unfortunately, he didn't want to play ball for us. So yeah, yeah. All jokes aside, um, I know it's been tough, and I wanted to give you this just just to cheer you up. What is it? It's a Volvo. Why do I want a Volvo? To remember. Remember what? Me. Why would, I, why would a Volvo rem remind me do of you? Do you not want it? Well, no, I, don't, I wouldn't say no, but why would a Volvo remind me of you? Well, no, this moment. Oh. You'll always remember this moment. Thanks very much, Matt. And Appreciate you'll always it. cherish the, that Volvo, won't you? Awesome. Yeah. Thanks very much. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> yeah, actually, we've had one. How that. are you fabricating the rear to fit the GTR subframe in it? How are you f f fabricating the rear to fit the GTR subframe in it? I guess we'll show everybody the rear subframe in a little while, but the boys have done a fantastic job of modifying the Nissan Navara chassis to allow the Nissan GTR rear subframe uh, into the Navara shell, uh, chassis, sorry, and building some boxes that obviously mount everything. And yeah, we've had to modify the chassis a lot to allow the suspension travel and movement. And yeah, yeah it's a we're gonna get, actually we're gonna get into the kind of realization of just how complex that is in, in a few moments. Yeah. What else do we got? Uh, we've got a question here. Will you be doing a head to head with Ken Block, truck truck versus Hooney truck? Good question. Who knows? Uh, I mean, truck, we have a, we versus Hooney Hoon. We have a we have well, we have a Nissan. He has a Ford. Uh, his is in, you know an incredible machine. Uh, I've, I've had the privilege of seeing it up close and personal. I've seen him drive it. It's insane. And you know, if we can come off with something, come up with something similar, I'll be very, very, uh, very excited about that. So yeah, he's got an incredible piece of kit there. Okay, keep your questions coming in. We will try and endeavour to answer every single one of them. Anything we don't get to, Bouncy will log on in person and answer them all himself this evening in bed. After this. After this, yes. Um, but meanwhile, work did continue, and uh, this is what you tuned in for. You want to actually see the progress on the truck. Curious, um, it was actually supposed to be easier in the rear than it is in the front. Is that your experience? Uh, no, I think that's probably something Ian would have said. Yeah. He prefers working in the rear than the front because yeah. he finds the rear easier to access than the front. Okay, okay. Well, anyway, this bit's about reassembling. And as we know, taking things apart is a lot easier than putting them back together. <laughs> If I'm brutally honest with you, mate, I ain't got a clue. They, they don't feel too great either. This says honest. R on it. Maybe I have that's, not got a clue, mate. If I'm maybe that's that side, and I don't know. I don't know. You Is tell it? me, I don't know. You, you tell me. This one says La. No way. So we both kept saying, at least the rear's going to be a lot easier. Personally, I think most of those arms got put in a container. For sure I've seen that arm somewhere. It's got, it's got to Look be in the, the container. Top, or container, up there. Underneath, it's got to be here, it hasn't gone anywhere. But the question is, yeah. where? We don't know where it is. No, I've seen it as well. I've got a feeling, I've seen one of them arms in a box. It's got to be in there somewhere. Look underneath that shelf where all the other arms. See what we have to put up with on a day-to-day -day basis. 
and seen something. Yeah, that's what's annoying me more than anything, unless you've thrown it away. Well, I haven't, I haven't touched it. Right, well, right. so it's here somewhere, get, isn't it? I need to get my off, is it? Where the fuck? Okay, this is a real situation. Guys in the green room, can you just look behind the cushion? We're looking for an arm. This is a big, just look behind the cushions, down the cracks of the sofa, anywhere. If you can just see an arm. Nathan, no, the, no the, arm, no. The future of the Nav Navara R project rests. Oh, Bagsy, it might be in a drawer. <laughs> Seriously? It might, it might be in the bottom drawer. The bottom drawer? <laughs> Why are you laughing? What's in the drawer? I, I don't know, it's just worth checking. I'm almost afraid to open the sodding drawer. <laughs> I'm not sure this is the arm we're looking for, but it's a arm. Okay, he's found it, guys. Stand down. Everyone. George, found the arm, mate. Stand down. There you go. That was almost too funny. Yeah, that okay. Was look, too well, no, funny. look. This has not been an easy time for anyone. You know, these long, long, long ambitious projects. Sometimes you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Sometimes it gets incredibly stressful and it gets you down. You just, you, you don't know if you're actually going to make it. You can't see the end, do you know what I mean? That's what happened to Ian. Because Ian's been grinding for eight weeks and that really had an effect on him. To be fair, he has done an incredible amount of cutting and grinding and then cutting and grinding, measuring, cutting yes, and grinding. Yes, yes, And then grinding some more. This, some might find this a little bit of a challenging one to watch, but it's really had an effect on Ian. Sick to death are you filming me with that fucking camera? I feel like I'm in Big Brother. Oh, Jesus Christ. Stop filming me. I just don't want to grind anymore. Stop filming me. Oh, fucking hell. Stop filming me, Ben. I'm trying to fucking talk now because you frustrated me. Oh, for fucking fuck's sake, man. I'm thinking about. You know, just lots of stuff in general, Ben, if I'm brutally honest with you. Shake your body left. Why are you filming me still? Why are you filming me, Ben? Stop filming me. Stop filming me, Ben. I feel like I spent the last eight weeks with a grinder in my hand, grinding stuff. Stop filming me. What are you doing? I'm just pretending I'm a VR38. F*** this, I'm just gonna fucking go home. I don't want you to film me, I'm hungry. The fuck are you looking at? <sighs> so Ian's understandably had to take some time away and our hearts go out to him. You know, it's hard enough, but with Ben, with a camera in your face all the time, you know, I feel like maybe Ben's the problem. It's possible. It's, uh, can you come? Can you? <laughs> Ben, it, Ben, this is Ben, everyone. Hi, Ben. Um, is there anything that you'd like to? Is there anything? That, is, is there anything that you'd like to say to Ian? I'm sorry. Thanks, we're, Ben. We're all. I, I, thanks. Ian would understand this, but I asked Mark. Yes, whispering. Good. Oh, nice touch. Thanks, Ben. Down and applause for Ben. <laughs> Guys, are you feeling for Ian? Are you missing Ian? Okay, no, no, that's <laughs> awkward, don't worry. Uh, let's go to some questions and comments. Uh, so we've got uh, one here. If you, had the GT if you had the GTR and the Navara R in a drag race, what one would you choose to drive and who would you pick to drive the other one? That is a very good question. Uh, I think, in all honesty, I think if it was a drag race, as the Navara is going to be four-wheel drive, I would assume that the Navara would win a drag race. Uh, the GTR is only two-wheel drive. So more grip off the start line, similar power, the GTC. I'd imagine Navara is going to win that pretty easily. Uh, who would I pick to drive the GTR? Uh, there's only really one or two other people that have ever driven the GTR other than me, which is either Corbin or Ian, or Nathan actually, in fact, so three people. Uh, and Danny actually, so that's four people actually. Why, it's like a village bike. Yeah, she's had a, she's had a, she's had a few people driver in a time. Uh, <laughs> so probably either Danny, Nathan, Corbin or Ian. I, and if I had to pick a driver out of those three, four even, it's uh, a good question. Ian has got drifting experience. Corbin has road rage experience. Nathan has no experience. 
and Danny has some experience. Nathan has it. <laughs> yeah. Round of applause for Nathan. <laughs> what else we got? Bagsy, are you doing the Essex to Edinburgh road trip with We Crusade? I certainly am, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to it. It's been something that has been in the calendar for a little while. It's going to be a cool trip. I'm looking forward to hanging out with lots of my friends that are also doing it. Yeah. And we're traveling from here at SP Motorsport all the way to Edinburgh and back. So he was going to do it in the PS, but that's all changed. Yes, now unfortunately that's not available. But yeah, it should be fun. And if anyone else is interested, you can jump on the Crusade website. Get on it now. Get on it. Yeah, well, there's still places. Okay, what else we got? Do you know where the exhaust will be vented and will it produce flames like the current GTR does? Well, that is an interesting question. One that I guess Mike Walton from Walton Motorsport can answer. Well done on the Walton Motorsport there. I'm glad you rem remembered that finally. <laughs> I've got a few ideas of where the uh, exhaust is going to come out. It's definitely going to make flames. That, that 100% I can guarantee. But uh, as you can see, the Navara doesn't actually have a body on it at the minute, so I can't really show you where the exhaust is going to come out. But I can assure you, you will like it. Awesome. Fantastic. The, Any, the man that can. The, the man that will. The man that is going to. He's going to. He's going to get it done. Um, anything, any well wishes? Any anyone there missing Ian at all? Uh, none really about Ian, but we have got one from uh, Chris Morris asking, "Are you going to try and break the caravan towing world record when the truck truck is done?" That is a, that is something that we have discussed uh, with the team. Yeah, I mean, look, we're looking to do some very different things with the Navara once it's built. Uh, one of those things could be potentially looking to break a world record, and one of the world records we've looked into that I think would be quite fun to do. And also a little bit of a challenge would Jump. be uh, no the world's fastest towing of a caravan. So we put a caravan on the back of the Navara and we tow it and get up to a certain speed and break the world record for the fastest towing of a caravan. But there must be a standard spec for the caravan. Uh, no, I think that as long as a caravan meets certain dimensions and right. has an axle, right. uh, it's good to go. Okay. So yeah, once the Navara is built, uh, we're looking forward to towing a caravan as fast as possible. Cool, cool. We've actually got one. Missing Ian. Oh, no. uh, Mark, no, Mark Buckle. Mark Buckle, aka Sweeps. AKA is missing Sweeps Ian. is missing Ian. Well, Sweeps, um, never fear, because I've actually got through the miracle of technology, I've actually got Ian in here. In your iPad. You've got to, you've got to bear with me, but I have got him in here. And there's a few things that you might recognise. <laughs> That sounds like Ian. Does that sound like Ian? It certainly if does. If I uh, connect, reconnect to the Bluetooth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> How is that modern technology uh, thing yeah. working out uh, it, <laughs> that's, that's a shame. That's a shame. But if I make this as loud as I can possibly make it. And put it next to your microphone. And put it next to my microphone, then maybe. I gotta work it out. Anybody at home? Anyone, like, anyone feeling any, better? Somebody at home. Are you hungry? No. Are you hungry? Four bagsies round here. It's like there's four bagsies round here. Buckle! Okay. Unfortunately. Okay, we're going to leave that there. <laughs> That's. Um... Where the fuck have you been? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I'd like to blame George Barclay for bringing his little speaker at the last moment with only 10 minutes to go. Yes. Yes. Uh, to why the iPad and yeah. the speaker yeah. aren't connected. There will be a special clip and maybe some downloads and a performance dedicated to Ian's memory. Ian, well, hopefully we can come back to the iPad in a moment. Yeah, maybe we, we can come can back get, to it. If we can get the speaker working. Um, should we get back to business in the meantime? Let's join the team in happier days. Right, I've had two cups of coffee. I've had my breakfast, I've had some biscuits. I think I might actually can do some work, Ben. Just putting a subframe, a subframe together and all the arms so we can put it in place on the Navara. That ain't where the wheel is though, mate. No. <laughs> Miles away from it. Do you know what we're going to have a problem with? The gearbox. The arms. We're going to have to fucking do it again, aren't we? Fucking hell, man. We ain't getting a break, are we? Yeah? 
I think the back is probably going to be 10 times worse than the front now, thinking about it. Because not only have we got to make a turret, we've got to redesign the whole chassis rail. Let the lulls commence, I say. Grinding steel is so satisfying. So we need to build a bridge in the chassis, same as we've done in the front, mm -hmm. but also it has to come in. So it has to come up and in yeah, and round. Because otherwise the struts and everything, the top arm's obviously going to hit and the struts won't go up to the strut towers to build unless we move it in. So it's going to be a bit of a nightmare. Why do we sound like we're in a fucking zoo? We are, we're in a wild rock century. South End Zoo. We've even got look, two little birds now. Why, why would you shoot them? Wow. Swallows are lovely. The debate rages on. I don't know where you stand on this. Swallows in the workshop. Is it a good thing? Is that nice? Are swallows not? Ian thinks swallows are nice. Well, it's entertaining. Yeah, yeah. Not distracting, off-putting. Not for me, maybe for Ian. Great, uh, green room, where do we sit on swallows? I think that might, that might be a night. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm talking about swallows, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sure they're fine. Mike loves swallows. Does he? Yeah, do looks I'm like a bit of a big, I'm a big swallow fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, given your experience in zoos, that is, yes. you would be mad not to explore the concept that you discussed in that. Because, Possibly. of course, we all remember this. First thing First is, I am not cutting my hair. I'm not changing the way I dress. I refuse to wear a suit. I am gay. I've had two boyfriends most of my life. I currently got legally married. Thank God. It's finally legal in America. I've had some kinky sex. I have tried drugs through the younger years of my life. I am broke as shit. I have a judgment against me from some bitch down there in Florida. I built one of the biggest facilities and the nicest facilities in this country as far as a private individual go. <laughs> Lot of baggage, but uh, very entertaining. We've had a delivery. Woo hey. Stauf have sent us two packages. Awesome. Um, Should we if you want to take that one. If you open that one. And I will open this. Steve, a few bits of merch for you and the guys. Handle with care. Some of the beanie hats can be a bit fragile. Thanks to everyone from Stauf. If you want to get any of your stuff on the stream or just to send anything random. Wow, uh, that bad luck, is that? No, he's not happy with that. Why, well, what's the matter? But it's bad luck, but it has been raining not 40 miles from here. Well, I thought this would be handy because apparently it's raining everywhere in the UK other than here right now. Yeah, so a bunch of beanie hats. Thanks, Stauf. I'm and not really superstitious, so it's fine. Very nice notebook as well. So thanks, guys, for that. Oh, and we've, there's, there's, do you know what? Is that what we're going to give away, an umbrella? I think we've got two umbrellas here, so we, yeah. should, we should give two umbrellas away. Uh, so I guess we should ask some sort of question or do some sort of competition to give two umbrellas away. I think the finest, the finest comment. The, the supreme I think the, comment of the I show. I think the funniest comment about where Ian possibly is right now wins an umbrella. And we can do two winners because we've got two umbrellas. Two winners. Where is Ian right now? And if you say Driftmasters, that's not funny. We want something funny. Yeah, okay. funny. Thank you. Okay, we've had one more thing. Oh, my days. <laughs> From Radium. <clears throat> You're not sure where you're going to put this, no? Yeah, I'm not sure Didn't about this. Didn't think about this before, did we? So this has just come in, and uh, wow. So this is our brand new radium fuel tank. It's just arrived only a few days ago. Um, this is a really cool piece of kit. This is the actual fuel tank that we're going to use inside the Navara R. What's really great about these fuel tanks is everything here is inside the cell. So all the pumps, absolutely everything, the swell pot, it's all contained in here. So you've just got, literally got one box of tricks. All the wiring goes to the top. It's really neat. The, you know, the actual product is absolutely amazing. The finish on it is something I'd expect to almost see in like an aircraft. You know, it's absolutely uh, insane the level of detail they've gone 
into to build these fuel tanks. And uh, yeah, we use them in all the cars and we're going to use it again in the Navara R project. Is it okay to fill it full of Monster Energy? Uh, it is. I don't know how fast the car will go when you add that, but okay. Okay. certainly I don't see any problem with it. Keep watching because we will be revealing what the Navara is actually going to look like uh, in an exclusive Sterling Automotive uh, render reveal. Um, get your questions coming in. Have we got some questions now over in the green room? We've actually got a comment about Ian, where he is. Where, oh, is, good. where is Ian? It's like, where's Wally, but where's Ian Waddington? <laughs> uh, Darren Townsley said, Ian's got some serious matches on Grinder. We've always grinding. Awesome. That's, that's somewhere he could be. I think we can find funnier comments, though. I think if somebody can, t you know, the funniest people, or the funniest comments yes. about where Ian is technically right now. Yes, we're looking for hilarity, please. Yes, could be great. Hilarity. And we'll send you two brand new stealth umbrellas not much good to you right now but however you know the weather will change and yep. depending where you are in the world right now uh you might need an umbrella yeah, it'll keep the sun off you yeah what else we've got coming in uh we've got another one actually about ian uh yep. ian is eating ham on ian is eating ham on, ham on. right i think something from the madrid days oh from spain yeah uh, that's ian actually from like joe a, ian did like a little bit of ham on, ham on even ham on ham on do you agree <laughs> you've got the you've got Ian's voiceover working. Yes, yes. Are you hungry? Brilliant. That's him <laughs> saying, "Are you hungry?" If that needs any translation. Someone else has asked, "Is Ian in Walton's hair?" It's possible. Yes, Ian could be very much in uh, Mike Walton's haircut. However, I'm only jealous. He has an amazing, uh, amazing hair cut, or an amount of hair. He has an amazing amount of hair, uh, front and back. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, yeah. Plumble. So, <laughs> um, we appear to have this working, and that's not pleasant. Um, so, we've got Ian in here. Right, Ian is here in your yes, iPad. Yes, he's, he's here in our hearts, and he's here. <laughs> and I think <laughs> that is Ian describing him going drifting. Play that is again. it? Play again. Which, this, this <laughs> one. <laughs> the, that is Ian on the throttle against someone like James Dean. If, Jack, if Ian talks about his drifting career, yeah. that is what it sounds like. Right, okay. Go again. <laughs> not, not that one. No, not no. that one. No. That one. Yeah. yeah. That one. Max he's around here. <laughs> Whenever, any, <laughs> when someone's got a long, miserable face and they're a bit grumpy, he says, he says it's like having another Banksy around here. I don't know why. I don't, I don't no. know why. I don't know why. You hungry? Maybe it's because you're hungry. Afternoon pro. Or you need one of those. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I think it's possible. Got tinnitus. Plumble. Plumble. Fuck off. <laughs> So you get the idea with that. Brilliant. So all that kind of fun you can have with a uh, soundboard and uh, some Ian's Ian noises. Some but he, he likes music and he likes the sound of his own voice. So this is kind of heaven. Great for Ian. A box for him. Yeah. Where were we? No. <laughs> you went off on your own there, mate. <sighs> Exhausts. Ex uh, okay, exhaust. Ah, yeah. Me and James had an idea. And this Mike might be able to help with this as well. Because we're always looking for... Uh, ways to innovate and add more value, other ways that we can provide entertainment from the vehicle. Okay, uh, you know, like exhausts make a sound. Mm -hmm. Like you know, uh, obviously the GTR makes a sound. This is the wrong engine, but it, you get the idea with it. Everybody loves that sound, don't they? But Formula One have gone, obviously, to the next level with what they can do. They can play tunes, can't they, with their engines? Like, God Save the Queen. I think we've got one doing Happy Birthday. OK, 
okay, that's a bit geeky and absolutely horrible to listen to, and obviously F1 on the next level, but do you think there's something we could do with the engine, the revving, the exhaust, to make some kind of, like, signature tune, maybe? Discuss. I have no idea. Mike's, got, <laughs> Mike's got a thought on this. No. No, okay. <laughs> But all you need to do is think outside the box, okay? I know what you're thinking, yeah, Formula One, they're like next level, they've got like millions to spend. But there's ways of doing it that are a bit more rudimental. Now, this next clip, use your imagination. Obviously, you have to think outside the box, but something like this could be possible with your exhaust. <laughs> So you just have to imagine, you just got to imagine the possibilities of an exhaust and the, go on Mike. <laughs> what, what, what the fuck have you been doing? What, James, why what? are you watching these videos? No, look, okay. What? I mean, you just literally showed a clip of a guy fingering a pipe. No, uh, no. Why, why, why has that got anything to do with cars? I'm, no, I'm intrigued, I'm intrigued, go on, go on. No. What are you doing to us? That is a very unique <laughs> instrument. What? I didn't approve that. We, we, can, we can do things with like the exhaust to make, you no. just try and get, just really try and imagine this. Just <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we could do this. Come no. on. Is, is, your, is your man all right? <laughs> what, what? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Mike, Some, I'm sorry. Someone needs to confiscate his laptop. <laughs> because I guarantee you there's some sketchy shit on there. You. If, that, if you. that's what he's bringing up and putting on the live stream, mate, I don't want to see his search history. Because that is weird. Oh. I, I almost think you don't deserve to see the finale after that, sir. I don't, there's I, more. I don't think there's more. you deserve uh, to see it. We can't wait to see the finale. That, if, if anything, we need a finale, please. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm sorry. All I can say is I'm sorry. Did, did, you, did you just lick your lips as well after that video? Hey, 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 hey. Right, come on. I thought, I thought, think outside the box. These people have vision. Clearly I was wrong. Okay, right, back in the workshop. Should we get back to business? I swear this is a program about a Navara build, but I don't know anymore. <laughs> okay. I'm in here to do something sort of semi-professional. What's going on? I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, his problem, you know his problem. We didn't watch any of the live streams before this, did we? That is true, yeah. Yeah, have we got any comments? I think I'm glad now. <laughs> any, any, more where, any, more, any more where's Ian's? Uh, we've had a few where's Ian's, but uh, we've had a question come in. Uh, someone's asking about snap-on toolboxes. Oh, yeah? Uh, saying that they can't get hold of one for love nor money. Hook a brother up. I, I do hear, unfortunately, all of our signature toolboxes are currently sold out at snap-on. However, if you ask a franchisee if you have one, uh, they might be able to get you one towards the end of the year. Currently, all of our Bagsy signature boxes, as far as I'm aware, are sold. There may be the odd franchisee somewhere in the country that has one left in stock, but your franchisee would be the place you need to ask for snap-on tools, camera. Tools, camera. Okay, okay, back with the build. Um, hunting for rear-end inspiration, the guys decided to offer up the tub to see how it fits. I swear this thing gets heavier every time we get up. Oh, shit! Right. Yeah, I tripped on the wheel. Oh, we're caught on the wheel. Oh, shit. So it's, I think, yeah, because you think that cut is about there. I think we're just, and I mean, just get it through there. Having nailed his colours to the mast, Ian returns to working on the front end. Last week we showed you that the turret was made from a factory Navara top mount, and then the rest of it was all made in sheet metal, 
This is what the factory turret looks like. So this was fabricated or welded to the chassis down here on the truck originally with the upper A-arm going above the shock because it runs a really small shock absorber. So now I'm going to cut this apart and turn it into what you see. Oh, linger, linger, linger. Hey, sandy sand now. I woke him up no alarm, huh? That's why I'm trying to keep calm. Remember, they never reply. Yeah. Ta da! There you go, that's how it works. Here's one I made earlier. Ice cream, bring that. Linker, 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 linker. Now that I'm on, wanna meet up. Uh, I tell them, keep the same energy. Yeah. It's not the same when I see up. No, linker, linker, linker. Hey. Have you, do you know who Bodger and Badger are? Who? Bodger and Badger. Bodger and Badger. <laughs> do you know who Bodger and Badger are? Nah. No. F*** off. You don't know who Bodger and Badger are? Guys, does anybody know who Bodger and Badger are? That's one of the things we want to get to. Naomi knows who Bodger and Badger are. Which is good. And any, uh, any questions <laughs> come in? <laughs> I've heard of them. I'm, I don't, couldn't tell you any more than that. Okay. We've right. had another Where's Ian, the uh, guy with the flute. Is that Ian's roommate? <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> cool. And, any, and yeah. Brett says it's called Mechophilia. Okay. <laughs> I'm not even sure where to go with that. No. Uh, any, any, any questions? Do you want to they, they're kind of mainly statements. Uh, some questions about the Navara. Uh, Good. Are Good. you running original glass windows or Perspex windows? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. I haven't, that's not actually something we've given a whole lot of thought to. I assume... It's uh, having windows. We're going to run glass because we want to run it on the road. The majority, obviously, the majority of the time it will be used as a, an everyday vehicle. So glass would be, I guess, the way forward with that. Uh, cool. However, there might be the odd event, you know, that we have to run Perspex. So maybe a little bit of both, actually. Good question, thanks mate. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Keep your questions coming in. Uh, there's still some time before the end of the show. We'll probably do a big roundup at the end. We'll have a couple more question sessions. We will get a bit more technical with Mike Walton because he's clearly here for business to talk about professional things. So we'll do that around the back end and the front end of the truck very shortly. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for the big reveal on what this thing's gonna look like, courtesy of Sterling Automotive. That's very exciting. But um, there's no denying it, Ian's out of the picture now. And uh, so for me, I felt like what we should do is look into recruitment. You know, maybe we've got to get some fresh blood in because he's, he's at his wit's end, the guy. Oh, well, who? Mike. Mike, Mike might be looking for a job as well. Well, his... <laughs> Apparent, well, we're going to have him grading Ian's welding a little bit later on, which is good. But we created a recruitment video for you, Bagsy. I know this isn't approved for SB Motorsport, but I'm sure you go to like recruitment fairs, schools, universities, colleges, to sell them the idea of working in motorsport. Because I think that's a great thing that we tell people how cool it is to work in motorsport. About educating the future. It's about educating the future. So this is a, this is a, a kind of a, something to bring their fresh blood in. So give it a, give it a watch. So you want to work in the motorsport industry? I, uh... Well, get revved up to work with some of the friendliest people you'll ever meet. I'm in. I'm in. You'll expand your skills from day one. Cheers, Bertrude. Pretty soon you'll be making the tea or holding some wood. The sky is the limit. Do you know that Corbin can dance like Michael Jackson? you'll certainly meet some characters. As you learn, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Because you're a naughty boy, aren't you, Bertrude? They'll soon be forgotten. You got that on camera. <laughs> Do you know who else likes smushing? Your mum. <laughs> the only angle I'm worried about is what angle I'm doing your mum from. <laughs> In the motorsport industry, you'll soon learn it's everyone's mum. And word to the wise, invest in the secret currency, 
pens. You can have this one. Hold on. Snatchy. Why don't you bring your own silver on pen? Stuff. I don't know, man. Yeah, one. Just give us that one. one. You, it don't work. I don't care. I don't use this a silver mine. pen. Well, take it, I don't care. Don't forget, it's not only high octane on the track. You're gonna blow your O-ring if you lift that. <laughs> Squeeze up. Squeeze up. It can be a real funky and fun environment. With some real cool dudes. Needed that. Who's a good boy? Virtual's a good boy. So, why not ask your careers advisor or probation officer about life in the motorsport industry today? It's a genuine opportunity for you. You could work in motorsport, couldn't you? Anyone? You could, you could yeah. generally go. The doors are open. The doors are open. Um, so there's that. Uh, any, any job applications come in with your comments, you can also send your CV as well and uh, we'll look over it. Um, how are we doing on the uh, communications front? We've actually had a job uh, application come in already that while the right video was on. That was very fast. Can I have a job from Jonathan Buck? I can be a beer assistant. Beer assistant. <laughs> yeah, he's got a job already. And he's small, so he won't take up a lot, take up a lot of space when yes, we take yes. him places, yeah. which is handy. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, back on the actual job. Ian's in the final throes of beating the front end into submission. Let's take a look at that. Is that skidding? Fucking hell, Ben. Fuck. That is, mate, isn't it? Got the front of the truck rolling. So we have it. A really good moment. I think we can now officially say that the front end of this truck is more or less almost finished. Officially. Yeah, I mean, we're certainly, I'd say we're not officially finished completely. We've still got some suspension work uh, to still do. Uh, we're waiting still for our development coilovers okay. uh, from SD suspension. We've got okay. some prototypes still here. We're gonna be changing them out very soon uh, for the brand new suspension that we'll be receiving, which we're excited to show everybody once that's completed, because obviously some of the different challenges we wanna do with the uh, Navara means that they've had to build something incredibly advanced for us, uh, something that we can still do all sorts of different things with. Um, and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to getting that and having that on there. Um, there's still a little bit of fabrication still doing the front end as far as mounting sort of things like radiators and obviously intercoolers and all that sort of stuff. So, but the front end essentially as far as the engine's concerned, mounting the engine and everything like that, that is all now fully complete. Yeah. Now Mike, whilst it's probably a little bit early to be thinking about manifolds, etc., you're an experienced guy casting your eyes over this. What, what, do, you, what do you think? Well, I mean... Looking at these worlds, I can see why uh, Ian spent so long with the grinder. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hopefully, no, I'm only joking. It's, it's fine, it's fine. He's going to be Hopefully sat there. Ian's He's going to try and kill me. <laughs> but please don't. Well, actually. <laughs> and if it's anything like that, you can go ahead. It probably won't work. <laughs> no, it is, it is, this is a fab fantastic bit of fabrication. That to get all this lined up with, that, with the gearbox in the back of the car and the diff right there, everything lined up. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of power going through this, hopefully, um, when we get it finished, if we get it finished. And uh, all of the back end of this needs to, uh, needs to be able to control that, and uh, I can't see any reason why it wouldn't. What stage do you start thinking about manifold? Later than now. Later than now. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need a bit more of... I mean, manifolds, manifolds are easy to do, okay. relatively, okay. because I can sort of fit them in the engine bay, which is ish there but uh, the rest of the exhaust system and where the pipe works going to route is uh, a little bit difficult when you haven't really got much of a truck to work with 
But you heard it here first. You did hear it here first. And the other thing that you can hear here first is that Walton Motorsport have a new website. We do have a new website which launched yesterday. You might have a few glitches, but you can probably see it on screen now. Take a look at it there. And you can buy a lot of the stuff that you would need for something like this. So all of the parts that we're going to be using in the Navara build are, will be easily and freely available on our website. Apart from the manifolds themselves, because they're going to be custom units, but you can inquire with us and we can make you custom units specifically for any build that you might need. Awesome. And of course, the proof will be in the pudding. Um, of course. When, when, they, when that happens. Of course. Uh, if we move, or shall we move down and take a look? This is a bit of an exclusive because you haven't seen how this happened other than there was some frustrations. Shock development still ongoing, right, Bagsy? Yeah, so obviously the shocks that are on there right now are development shocks that we're not showing at the moment because there's still things that we're changing and working with with ST, KW suspension. So uh, hopefully coming into September's live, we should have the suspension on the truck. And finished, that's quite special. Done. Yeah, it's yeah. very, very special. Yeah. There's going to be different things that we, you know, we can show you about the suspension. Um, you know, we're excited about what the possibilities are using the new suspension that we've developed yeah. with them. Shall we talk turbos? We certainly, so we we, certainly can we've talk got turbos. One over there. What? I think Mike's brought one there, things or one there? that we can Which one do you want? look at. Now, this one's the most interesting one because this is actually a new Garrett G series turbo, it's a G3660. But a keen eyed of you will notice that this is a reverse rotation turbo. So, if you look at this one, we go and put them next to each other. Got one that way, and one that is symmetrical the other way. How fancy is that? Which means that we can make the engine bay and the Navara look absolutely amazing. Can we hold this one? So that's purely on aesthetics, one. right? Is it? Or well, is there any actual mechanical benefit to it? Well, you can fit them in, so it will be symmetrical side to side. So if you had an engine bay that, that suited this rotation better, for example, this, if you put them side by side, you can make the pipe work nice and simple and easy this side, and then you can replicate it the other side, but in a mirror image. So you don't have to compromise uh, flow or, or anything really to do as far as the turbo is concerned as far, and in uh, manifold manufacturing. You can literally do exactly what you want. You don't have to roll one one way and one the other way. Got you, got you. And it looks really nice because you'll have one facing yeah, and one way and one look, facing the other. Symmetrical. That's the main look thing. Lovely. It look very nice. It look lovely. Especially with a pair of these wastegates underneath each one. Anything else that we should be covering whilst we're up at the front end? Uh, not really. We're obviously we're partnered with Garrett. They've supplied us some really, really cool turbos. Um, we're, you know, I think it's going to be very, very responsive, still with a huge amount of power. You know, it's very easy to make power when you've got a huge, great big turbo and uh, an engine that you know, isn't really capable for it. So you have a huge amount of lag. So before you get any power, you have a huge amount of rev range and the turbo comes in at the last moment. But with these brand new uh, G30 660 turbos, they're gonna make a huge amount of power and uh, make a lovely rev range as well. So it's gonna pull really hard all the way through. So we're excited about that. Awesome, awesome. And obviously Mike will know more about the fact that we're working obviously with that vibrant performance uh, to you know, make some of the uh, v bands and bits and pieces, and obviously turbo smart on the wastegates. Yeah, so it's all well and good making all the power and uh, boost in the world, but if you can't control it, your car's not going to work, and that's where turbo smart come in. Again, all available from watermotorsport.com. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, thanks so much for being with us, and we really look forward to the developments in the different tunes that we might be able to play with the engine. I know that that sparked an idea in your head and you're possibly going to be working on that. I mean, that was the thing that I was most interested in. Thank you for enlightening me <laughs> with that video. No worries, no worries. Speaking of that video, you might be watching along to this and trying to build your own Navara R and thinking, it's, I'm missing some of the bits of the steps and you're trying to copy what Ian's doing and build your own and you're missing some bits. Well, fear not, there is going to be a more in-depth YouTube series where you can get all of the ins and outs and the whole build and take it in over a series of videos. And we are working on that. It's gonna take a bit of time because you've gotta see what we've gotta work with. It's, it's challenging.
All right, so currently colliding with the sheet metal inside the wheel arch, so we're just going to quickly remove it with this snap-on four and a half inch grinder, lower the truck down onto the body mounts, and then off to the pub. Join us as we learn along together. Hi, YouTube. How the f are you? With all the fun along the way, it's almost like being here. It's pretty fucking self-explanatory, isn't it? Like if that. you can't fucking understand what I'm doing, then you're a fucking <laughs> How about that? Fuck you, YouTube, you bunch of sack of shit, useless cats. Fucking pricks. If you're watching a video on how to build a truck, you shouldn't be even near a fucking truck. How about that? You see what we've got to work with. I'm not sure YouTube's going to appreciate being told if you're watching this video, you shouldn't be watching, you shouldn't be working on a truck. But hey, who am I to tell Ian what to say and what not to say? Exactly, and we have Lee following Ian around the workshop with a beep button just constantly. <laughs> beep. Beep button every yes. time he says something. Yes. Were you offended by that? Please let us know. Uh, I certainly was. Um, Keep your comments coming in. Just a few moments now, we're going to do the reveal of what this thing's actually going to look like in the fullness of time. Um, any other random comments we want to wrap up before uh, we get into that? Well, talking about turbos, we've actually got a question about them. Are they going to stick out of the bonnet or hood like the Hooney truck? Uh, I guess it's a possibility. Uh, I guess Mike will answer that question. I think we're planning on probably putting them under the bonnet. I don't think we're exposing them because I know that the engine, when it sits inside the Navara, actually sits quite low. Uh, the engine is, when you open the bonnet, from what we've seen so far, the engine obviously where it sits right now in the chassis sits quite low. So I don't think we'd put the turbos out the bonnet because it would be crazy, but Mike? I mean, I can put them out the bonnet <laughs> if you want them out of the bonnet, but I don't think you're going to want them out of the bonnet. Yeah, they, they look good on the Hoonigan, but I think you want to drive this more than just for a couple of videos, don't you? Yeah, of course. So yeah. we're going to make it a little bit more road legal, shall we say? Ish, road legal enough. Ish, road legal ish. Yeah, no, definitely. The, the, as I said, the, uh, when we put the actual cab back on the chassis and you open the bonnet and see the engine, it's quite, the engine is quite low down. So to put the turbos right out the bonnet, they would be some distance from the engine. So no, we're going to put the turbos right next to the engine, which will be inside the bonnet. Okay, cool, cool. I know we've got some questions on the actual uh, shape of the body, which we're going to reveal in a minute, so we'll get into them. But before we do that, any final thoughts from the madness out there? We've actually got a question about Ian again. Good, good. Uh, what's Ian going to grind when the truck is finished? Your mile. Wow. That's wow. A <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> sorry, you would sorry, probably have sorry, to sorry, George, what was that comment? Um, Sorry, George, say that again. Yeah, just answering as Ian would, because he's not here tonight. Ian would probably reply, your mum. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, you know, once the Navarra's finished, who knows what we're doing next? Yeah. All to be revealed, I guess. Yeah, can't wait to find out. Mm. Okay, so this is the moment. Um, I think we've got the pictures queued up. So what we'll do is we'll take a look at what this thing's going to look like. And as you say, this is stage one. I think we can get that on there now. Yeah, so this is stage one of what the, uh, you know, the Navara R is going to look like. This is working with Sterling Automotive. Um, we decided to work with Sterling because, you know, they're an amazing British brand. They're based uh, up in Blackburn and everything they can do for us, they can do in-house. They've done all the design work. They've got all the 3D printing done. Um, they're doing all the development work right now and we're extremely excited about you know working with them because it's a one-stop shop for everything that we need and it's really simple we gave them a brief of what I wanted the truck to look like and obviously what we wanted to do with the truck and they were able to come up with a solution very quickly uh, really easily and they had everything we needed uh, to get the job done in-house and that makes a huge amount of difference when it comes to a to a de development and a design process. Um, and they do some really cool stuff with all sorts of stuff from, like as I said, from Defenders, old and new, vans, pickup trucks, um, you know, all sorts of different vehicles. And uh, yeah, what they come up with as well, in, you know, when I describe it to them, they come up with it on CAD and on 3D drawings and all sorts of stuff, and it just looks perfect. So Out of your brain, in, can we see it again, the front end? Yeah, so as I said, we're about, I'd, I'd say we're probably 85, 90% there. This is still very much a, a, a mock-up, a design. Yeah. Um, but you know, we're we're looking towards this at the moment. There's going to be a few subtle changes, nothing too crazy, but this is what we're working towards at the moment. And uh, 
we're very, very excited to, uh, to you know, receive the first version of the body kit, test it, make sure it fits absolutely perfect, which I have no doubt it will. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be available for sale, so you can click onto the Sterling Automotive website, check out all the other things they do, and also in the near future, pick up a crazy looking body kit like that for your own Nissan Navara. Really? Well, what I love is that it is aggressive, but still modern, not like old school. You know, when I, just, when I, when I, when I spoke to Sterling, the one thing I wanted to make sure that we got across is that it still very much looked like a Navara. I didn't want it to go down the road and people didn't understand what it still was. I wanted it to very much look like a Nissan, Nissan Navara still. So um, I think they've done that very, very well in the sense as well that it looks great and it's still a Nissan Navara. What has the internet got to say about it though, guys? We've had a couple of comments already saying looks epic by Joe Morris and uh, someone else has said love that render. Someone else has just come in saying epicness overload. Oh wow, epicness overload. You can never have too much though. So. Yeah, but it's overload, it's epic. Obviously we're going to be still tweaking it slightly and but, but, but we are looking forward to releasing a full render of the finished article next week. Uh, we're going to be speaking with Sterling Automotive over the next few days, going into next week, about getting it finalised, getting it finished, and we will we will be releasing the final product next week. And uh, very excited to see what everybody has to think about it. Uh, we've got another question with reference to the uh, Sterling brand. Can Sterling transfer that to a competition race vehicle? Um, so yeah, of course, obviously we've explained fully to Sterling Automotive what we wanted to do with the truck. Um, and all the things we're planning on doing with it, and they're very confident that the kit that we're receiving from them, that they're supplying, will be able to stand up to all sorts of conditions. And uh, yeah, it, they're building it out of some really, really cool high-end material, which will be able to withstand all of my driving, hopefully. <sighs> Fingers crossed. Wow. All those barriers. Another one. Will, will they be able to get this for road-going vehicles as well? Yeah, so as I said, uh, Sterling are going to be supplying the body kit for anybody at home that has a Nissan Navara that wants to make their uh, Navara look a little bit better, it will be for sale. I would estimate it will be on sale by the, you know, by the beginning of next year. Wow, wow. I might be in as the you, queue. As you now have. Yes. Have just, you've just purchased a brand new Nissan Navara. I have indeed, and uh, with this project in mind. Obviously, we're paying you way too much money. Yeah. <laughs> I think that just about wraps it up. Unless there's any final thoughts sneaking through. Who won the umbrellas? We need oh, who won the umbrellas? We need the, two, the roommate comment, surely. Who, we need to find two people that f said the funniest thing about where Ian is as to well, winning the umbrellas. I think the man uh, fingering the pipe was quite a good, uh, good one. Where, sorry? The man fingering the pipe. Matt's uh, favourite video yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, we should <laughs> certainly send them one, yep. Well, yeah. Cool. Uh, no, he's just looking for another one. Well, we can always there, check. There, we, what, we there can, will be a, you know, a, a serious process. We'll put it to the board and we'll go through all the comments and we will decide on merit the best two comments about Ian, each to win an umbrella. And where Ian is. And, and then we'll send them a brand new uh, staff umbrella. Awesome. Well, this has been amazing. Uh, I've enjoyed this. You? Yeah, I mean, tolerated it. I've tolerated it. Yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a lot of things in this tonight's episode that wasn't approved, but you know, uh, <laughs> they've gone out on the internet. And there's nothing pulling it back now. Uh, I will be having words with James after the show, which is your business partner, as to why I don't get to see all the clips before they go out. But hey ho, we're there now. So, so my request for um, pyrotechnics and somebody playing the harp next time is not going to be approved. Possibly not. Okay, well, okay, thanks. And thank you from, uh, goodbye from Mike Walton. Bye, Mike. Thanks for coming, buddy. Round of applause for Mike, everybody. Bye. <laughs> I haven't done anything yet. And thanks to the green room, everyone in there. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks to Bagsy. Hello. Uh, firstly, thank you very much for watching. And secondly, in the immortal words of Ian, stop filming me. <laughs> Bye. I'm the best. It took you four days to make them. Tell me so I'm the best. If they didn't fit, I'd be pretty good. Tell me I'm the best. Do you know what is boring? Waiting for you to do something. Shut up, mate.
mate. It's like a pencil with no lead now. You're living the dream. No, let me rephrase that, Corbin. We're, We're living the dream. Yeah.